Hi, I'm Kevin Lawyer, and this is Shane Evans, a leader. And, and today we're going to talk about um, this micro 2RO machine and, and washing, rinsing, and desugaring machines as a whole. Um, so Shane just shut this machine off. Uh, it's in our concentrate cycle, so we're, we're done concentrating right now and moving into the next phase, which is desugaring. Can you talk about uh, desugaring, what it is, and what we do? Uh, desugaring is simply a concentration cycle. Um, and what we will do is we will switch from our uh, sap tank to our permeate tank and we will run that under pressure for a while until the sugar content and the membranes come down. Yeah, and what changes? What do you do now to switch from concentration mode to desugar with this machine? I would simply go over and switch my valve from my sap tank or towards my permeate tank. That would be it. So switching it from, this, from the, the sap tank to the permeate, so now you have water in that machine. The water, yes. Yeah, and then what do you do with the machine next? I, after we were done that cycle, we would go into a rinse cycle. Okay, so during that desugar cycle, we're flushing all that syrup out of the machine. Correct. On a small machine, not that much sugar is in that machine? Not that much. You're probably only going to be 4 to 6%, somewhere in there. So pretty low, but on a big machine... It's it could take some time. It could take 15 to 20 minutes to completely desugar the machine. And it's a, it's a lot of sugar. You could lose yes. a lot of syrup. If that is just immediately gets flushed down the drain, yeah. you're losing a lot of syrup. There, yeah, so. over the amount of times that you would be doing it throughout the season, the course of the season, you could lose a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of sugar at that So point. you're done concentrating. You switch into the water, switch into the permeate, and yeah. then from now you turn the machine back on, yep. let it flush out of that machine. Yep. So go ahead, and if you want to start it, and we'll show you what to do. So we're, the first valve we're going to open is the V2 valve. That will open complete flow through the machine. And then we are going to open our V4 valve. And then we are going to open our V3 valve. And those come directly from your meter. They will push out to its uh, discharged area. So now that we took all the pressure off the machine, everything now from um, for sap, or excuse me, everything now for permeate is now running down the drain. And we need to rinse that machine. So talk a little about what, what, what about permeate rinse. So permeate rinse, we want to try to put at least through 60 gallons through each membrane. So what we'll do is we'll rinse the machine for roughly five minutes. So total, we're about 120 gallons on, on this rinse. And we're going to rinse that machine now to send it to the next stage. Yep. We're going to begin by turning on pump one. Pump two. And then we will engage our pressure differential switch. So talk a little about what these are, Shane, and what they do. So this is your concentrate meter. Right now, it's, it's just really putting flow through the machine. You've got very little bit coming out of the permeate because that has to go through the membrane to get into the center tube coming out of the membrane. So most of it is just going straight out of the membrane, and that is removing the layers that you may have built up from the pressure of the machine and the sugar in the machine. So now we've sent it through our five minutes of our rinse cycle, and we're going to turn the machine off and send it into the next cycle. Just engage the pressure differential switch. We're going to turn off pump two, and then pump one. OK, so we just finished our rinse now, and now we need to fill the wash tank. Shane's going to show you the best and really the easiest method to filling the wash tank. Yep. So we're just going to turn pump two off and let that keep running and take your you can take the lid off because you're going to end up having to uh, put soap in here and basically what you're going to do is you're just going to come over here and you're going to turn the v19 valve so this is starting to fill up now you yeah you're watching the tank fill and when it gets about three quarters of the way up or so just turn pump one off and this, this actually has markings on the tank, so right at the two, that's where you're gonna shut that pump off. So now, now that that's done, the wash tank's full, we send it into the next phase. The next phase for us is the wash cycle. So we've already desugared, we've rinsed, now it's time for us to wash. So what changes now, Shane, to send it into that cycle? So the only thing that's gonna change now to send it into that cycle is we're gonna go down here to V6 valve, and we're gonna turn V6 valve towards the pump. And now that's going to draw from this wash tank down to the pump, first pump, up to the second pump, through the membranes, back to the wash tank. And it's just going to be a cycle until it heats up. So that, that small amount of liquid with this machine now turns it into a closed loop. 
So that machine just circulates and circulates, like Shane said, and heats the machine up. So the next step for us is um, starting the machine. Yep. So we start the machine. Now, you know, as you notice, we start this machine without putting anything in here. All we do is we're starting it. It may be cold, but we know it's, if it's going to be sap temperature somewhere around 38 to 45, we're going to start it first. So in order to start it, you're going to have to disengage your pressure switch. We're going to come down to M1. We're going to turn M1 on. And then we're going to turn M2 on. And then engage our pressure differential switch. Now the machine is in wash mode. Yeah, and if we're starting cold, it's gonna take a fair bit of time for it to warm up. It may take 10 to 15 minutes, but we wanna add that soap right around 70. Yep. So tell me about that, Shane. So we're gonna wait till the temperature gets up to 70, and you're gonna have to have some type of um, thermometer, whether it be a candy thermometer, um, it could be a handheld thermometer, and just periodically check it till it gets up around 70. We use a candy thermometer and you can just kind of set a candy thermometer. Inside and you can watch until it gets up to 70. Okay, now, so we've actually, we got the wash tank now full of water uh, with that permeate to cycle into the wash cycle. It's been running uh, once we get it up to about 70 degrees. Now we're looking at uh, adding our soap. So Shane, you want to talk a little about what these soaps are and what they do? So our soaps comes in five pounds or two pounds. Um, so for this style machine here, two four inch membranes, all you really need is about a uh, tablespoon of soap. Um, so you're gonna run that up to about 115 to 118 degrees. You can periodically check it as it gets higher in temperature to see where your pH may be as the soap and the bacteria are fighting each other. The pH may come down just a little bit so you can add a little bit more soap through that process if you need to, but most of the time it stays up high, especially if you're keeping up on cleaning on the machine. This yeah. soap is buffered, so also you don't have to worry about it over pH and on your membranes as well. Yeah, and, and when you're checking that, Shane, tell me about how you check it and what you check it with. Uh, you can check it with a um, test strips. You can check it with a digital pH meter, uh, which we sell here. Uh, but most commonly, especially for something this size, most people are using pH strips. Yeah, and you're trying to get that to as close to 12 as you can. Yeah. So, you know, you'll get up there usually yeah. with, with a couple tablespoons there. Again, yeah, this stuff is buffered, so you're not going to harm the membrane if you add a little more soap than what you're supposed to. The nice thing about this RO soap is it's UPS shippable. So if you forget it and you take your RO machine home, you don't have it, you can get it shipped um, directly to you. So that works out well. So Shane, looking at this machine overall and you add this soap to this machine, you're checking it periodically. Every 10 degrees or so usually is how you check it? Yeah, you can go, you can go up to 15 to 20 um, and, and, and still be fine. I would usually probably just check it once more towards the end, somewhere up around 100 degrees or so, yeah. 95 degrees, check it and see where it's at. And if it's still holding good, you're probably okay. Okay. So that's great. And you'll start to see this tank, you know, the water discoloration and then the pre-filters. Talk a little about the pre-filters and what happens there with this machine as you run. So the pre-filters can get plugged up. The more you use them, obviously, the more uh, stuff that is going to collect inside of them. Um, particles. Soap is another thing. Soap can slime them over, so it'll, it'll disallow flow to go through, especially if they're, if they're plugged already, if they're, if they're full of minerals and different bacteria and stuff like that. So you may have to change the pre-filter out after a wash or something of that nature. You may notice it more after a wash. So just periodically check your pre-filters. Okay. So then how often do you clean? When's the right time to clean? Personally, myself, I like to at least rinse the machine and wash machine after every use. Uh, if you're doing an extended concentration cycle, you may have to shut down halfway through it. At least give it a good rinse. If you have time, you can give it a wash but at least a good rinse and then a good wash after the concentration cycle. Yeah, in most cases though, you're gonna run you know, in that four to five hours of runtime per day. Four to five day. hours. If you're seeing that you're running a lot more than that, you really should rinse and wash again. You really should, yep. Yeah, and you're, you're looking at soap every time. Yep, yep. yep. So you're not gonna harm these, this style of membrane. 
Yeah, and it's good to know. It's kind of good to mental note that if you're thinking you're washing for, you know, you're rinsing and concentrating for eight hours a day, it might be too small of a machine, or you're just going to have to make sure you wash more often. Right. Right? Right. So, yeah, a four- to six-hour period works, or in this case, after every single use, yeah. every day. Yeah, every so day. So the, the one thing, I think the mistakes that I see, you know, and looking at this in the field is uh, if you short cycle rinse water, right? Yeah. You, you don't want to short cycle rinse water. You do not. No. Yeah. It, the membranes layer, and the more water you put over them, the more layers it takes off. It's just like a river or a brook running through. It erodes stuff. It, 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 it takes minerals out. So you want to just keep that water going over that. And the more water you use on them, the better they are. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to have a small amount of water every day. You do not. No. Nope. Yeah, wash cycles, the less you wash it, the more you use it. It's going to deteriorate the, the use and the flow of that machine over time. Correct. Yep. Yeah, the, and the more you do that, the longer your membranes are gonna last. So. Yep. What are you What are you seeing on membrane life for years? Most people that use them. Yeah, I mean we've had these machines out there for somewhere around five years now, and um, people are still using the same membranes. Yeah, and usually, you know, for most of the time, five to seven years is pretty good yeah. use out of a membrane. Yeah, yep. and it, and it depends how hard you run the machine. You know, if you're running it, we've got some guys that are running 800 taps on these machines. Yeah. They may their membrane life is gonna be less than what the person running four or 500 taps on the on the machine is. And how high you go and concentrate with the machine, all that plays into a factor. Oh, I but, agree. But you can go five to six years easily on a membrane. Yeah, and in this machine, you know, that that two to eight percent concentrate in one pass, which this, this machine will do pretty consistently. It will do. You know, some people will try to push them higher than that. And, they will. Yeah, and generally that shortens your life of your membrane. Yep. So be aware of that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so now now we've, we've gone to the concentrate, we've desugared, We've rinsed, you know, in this case now we've soaped. Um, now we're letting it soap up and we're continuing on to the soap cycle. We've, we looked at how much soap we have uh, from there. And then we'll talk a little more about um, some of the other, the acid and some of the other things. Yep. So along with soap, uh, we also have citric acid here. So soap generally works uh, great for most machines in most regions, but talk a little about the citric acid that we have. So citric acid is based more for minerals is what it's based for. So if your membranes are down in flow and they're not coming back up with the soap washes, you should probably give it a citric acid wash because yep. it's minerals you're trying to erode at that point. Yeah, and that acid is pretty much the opposite of the soap now. So you're looking for that as close to pH of 12 as you can with soap. Talk about the pH of, this, of citric the, acid. The citric acid pH will go all the way down to 2. Yep. So if you can get, keep it down to between two and three while you're washing the machine, uh, the citric acid should work for you. Yeah, and that, that pH of three through the machine is going to change the machine. You'll start to mm -hmm. see things that you don't see with soap. Right. You know, one of the things that I've seen in the past is talk about how it changes these actual flow meters. You'll be seeing the minerals come out of there, and you could see some severe discoloration in your permeate or in the concentrate. Yeah. Meter. Yeah, it's pretty normal to see that. It is normal. Yeah, and in some we notice sometimes that it's regionalized. So you might use, you know, your soap might work great for you, but the acid itself might work for you if you're in a western region or if you're somewhere else. You might find that works better. If they're really mineraled up, you could see like an orange, kind of like a reddish tinge in the, in the meter. Yeah. Um, don't get worried about it. Um, it's perfectly normal. It's working and it's cleaning the machine. Yeah, and then same process as the soap. We're looking at checking that the same way with pH strips or a pH meter. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So same process. You're still sending it through a wash. Let's talk about uh, looking at that towards the end of the season. Yeah. So I, I recommend doing it halfway through the season because the citric acid does not hurt the machine. Yep. It's actually a good practice to do it halfway through the season and then at the end of the season again. Yep. Yep. So, you know, you're looking at, you might use that as much as in this case, two times a year or more, but you can let that sit in the machine, right? Yes, you can. You can let that sit in the machine for over a week. Yep. And you can cycle the machine. The other thing you can do is you can come back and cycle the machine, turn it on, bring it up to temperature, shut it off, and let it sit there. And you can do that periodically throughout a week. Can you talk a little more about that? So you're going to wash that machine. Yep. You're going to put the citric acid in. Yep. You're going to let it go to temp yep. at that pH of 3. Yep. And then you said let it sit. Do, yep. do anything else at that point or just let it sit? Just let it sit. Right? Yep. And so, then you can cycle it the next day or you can wait a couple days and cycle it again. Yep, does not hurt the machine to do that. Does not. Yep. That's pretty common practice for most sugar makers to do that towards the end of the season. Yep, so for this little machine, especially with this, with this micro, it works just fine to do that. It sure does. Yep, yep. great. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've, we've desugared the machine, we've rinsed, we've washed, we've rinsed again. That machine generally is clean. So uh, we have one last step that we do, and that is the, per the permeability test. It's called a flow test. Or a bench test. We, we have different words for it overall, but we just want to make sure this machine is showing us that it's clean. So the, the membranes themselves, there's this flow meter on this that actually tells us the speed of the, the run cycle on that machine. So uh, now that it's rinsed, the valves are actually in the rinse mode overall. We want to switch that to the next stage, which is the permeability test. Yeah. It's, it's actually the exact same as a wash cycle. So go ahead it and explain is. that, Shane. So basically you're going to have your machine in a wash cycle is what you're going to do. Um, when you get your machine, you're going to get some documentation with it, and it's going to tell you the permeability test of what the machine was when it left. Normally you're going to lose anywhere around 10% of that after you use it a few times. The membrane is going to settle into a point. Normally these machines will settle into somewhere around a 3.2 to 3.5 gallons a minute is where they'll settle into. Okay. So that's, that's your target point. That's what you're going to try to want to reach back to every time you use the machine because you're going to lose a little bit of that. The membranes are going to get dirty. You're going to rinse it, wash it. That should come back up. But we need, in order to do that, we need to do the permeability test to see where it is. And that you can achieve that by running the machine at 150 PSI by closing this valve till it reaches 150 PSI. And your liquid temp should be 70 degrees. And then you're going to want to read where this flow is in here. So it's important to note there that with that machine, um, you're, when you turn that back into the wash cycle, you've already drained the water out. The, the, the dirty water that was in there has been all flushed out by the drain, so you have clean water in yep. there. And then talk a little about when to check it initially, because you can check it first in your wash cycle, and how to check it, and then what you're looking for in terms of flow on this machine. If you, if you want to check it before a wash cycle, so when you fill the wash tank up and you want to check it before you add your soap, check it then then add your soap, and then you're gonna do your rinse after you're done your soap wash, and then you fill the wash tank back up, and then you'll check it again is what you'll do. Yeah, and he, and he mentioned, uh, you know, the nice thing is it's in the wash cycle. So yes. once it gets up to that 70 degrees, yeah. uh, you, at that 150 PSI, you can check it as it's, as it's heating up, right? You can check it, yes. So you can check it, and you know where that, that, that measurement is. Because at 70 degrees, ideally, is when you're going to be adding your liquid. So just close the, the V2 valve until it reaches 150 PSI and take a quick look and see where it is. And where, where does it normally run clean? On, the, on a two membrane, a, a micro two, where does it normally run? 3.2 to 3.5 gallons a minute. So in this case, if you notice right at that mark, it's going to run right about there when it's clean. Yep. So you're going to run that through when you're concentrating sap. You're going to run that through. It's going to get dirty. It is Where does it dirty. normally end up being when it's dirty? It can be down around the 2.5 to 2.8, somewhere in that mark. And this is a combined number, right? This is a combined So that's number. a combined uh, permeate, permeate between the two for, membranes. For flow. Yes. So so yeah, that's important to look at that because if you're not seeing 3.2 to 3.5, even after it's clean, it's not yeah, clean. It's not clean. It's not clean. So it might be acid. Yes. You know, it might be more soap. Yeah. You might go out, or there's a potential that membranes are no good, right? There's a potential. So you you know if you're low in flow on that machine and you've ran that and let's say you have you've had this machine for five years and it's starting to get down in flow, you know where do you, where do you feel like is the dangerous place to be on flow? Two and a half or lower on these machines. Even the, the, the max that you can get it clean. They right? start. They start to become harder to get back because you've got to erode so many layers off in the membrane in order to get back to that point where it was pushing enough water into the center of the membrane. Yeah. So if you're not seeing anything, anything really above two and a half, probably a good chance it's time to look at new membranes. That's. Sometimes uh, it can take upwards of eight to ten washes to get it back to that if you let the membranes get really, really dirty. Yeah, it's challenging if you yeah. can get it at all. If you can get it at all. Yeah. Yep. So the, the, key, the key with the whole process is consistency. Stay on top. Of the Stay cleaning. on top. Yeah. You know, don't miss your wash cycles. Don't short cycle your rinse cycles. No. You know? uh, big permeate tanks. I can't stress enough how important permeate water is to clean an RO machine. Save your water. That does most of your cleaning. Yep. Yeah. OK. That's great. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Um, we've sent it through all the cycles, so hopefully you're all set to go and you're, you're ready and you're clean in this machine and you continue to run at, at high volume and high percentages. Oh, so the nice thing about these machines overall is that once you figure this out, you know, you can run more machines, Shane. You want to talk a little about that? Yeah, over here we have our eco machine. And this machine's a step up. This is a four-inch membrane machine. 
and this is an eight inch membrane machine. That four inch machine, that micro runs identical. The valves are the same, lumbered the same, the valves turn the same way and operates almost identically as that micro version machine. So once you learn that machine, you're gonna be able to run any one of our machines. Now that's the nice thing is that it looks a lot bigger, uh, like there's more here, but you look at some of these valves, you're still dealing with the same valve numbers. You, you still have the same V6 valve. There's still a wash tank here. It's very similar to the smaller machine. So it operates the same. You got a few more features on this machine. Yeah. So one, one thing that um, this machine has that that one doesn't is it has a needle valve. So it's got a little bit more easy of adjustment on your concentrate. So you would particularly close your V18 valve up, and this is how you adjust your gallons per minute on your concentrate. Yeah, so the more, the more you tighten there, the, the higher the concentrate. Exactly. So you've got a fine-tuned adjustment there versus a valve. Exactly. You, know, you still that's can the, adjust that's them That's the only difference. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then the nice thing here is the, the extra features, like you have some testers on the front of this machine that you can test out of the front. Yeah, but over, overall with this machine, um, it's very similar. Very similar. Yeah, so if you start adding, and if you look here, you'll start to see that even though it's bigger, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of in the same spot, that's a bigger membrane, it's right there. The two and three post machines are, are very similar. They're just adding membranes, adding series of membranes. Yeah, the other feature that this machine has is it has a temp display on it, and it has an automatic shut off. So when this thing reaches 118 degrees, it's gonna shut off for yeah. you. So your wash tank there, when you're sending it through the wash cycle, you don't have to worry about watching a thermometer. It nope. shuts off. It shuts off on its own. Yeah, yeah. This one has the same basic features. It shuts off when yep. there's no sap. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. This, this has the same features. It has the pressure switch on it. So when it runs out of sap, it just shuts off. This one, you do not have to manually turn on your pressure switch. It's already in the machine. That's another little added upgrade to this machine. Okay. Yeah, and what are you getting normally for when, when this machine starts in at, let's say, 2% 2, 2 sugar? What do you get out of it? Uh, I mean, you can get up over 12% out of this machine pretty easily. Yeah. Um, but it goes to 8%, and you're going to get rid of 500 to 550 gallons an hour with this so, machine. So significant difference in run speed. Yeah. But you're still, getting, you're still getting what you need out of it. Yeah. Yeah, one thing to mention, too, with these machines is that is your sap changes temperature, and it slows down and speeds up. It sure so, does. So if you're, if you're colder, molecules expand, and they... They contract. So um, the, the colder it is, the harder it goes through the machine. The warmer it is, the faster it's going to go through the machine. Yeah, the, un the unfortunate part to that is the warmer it is in the unit, the, the faster it is, but it also builds up bacteria as well. It sure does. So yeah. you're going to have bacteria building that machine, but it's faster. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So absolutely. Well, that's, that's great. Yeah, it's nice to know these machines are similar. Yeah, and this one uses a 20-inch uh, cartridge filter rather than the 10-inch cartridge filter. That's the only other difference. Okay. Well, I hope it's been helpful here with our own machines to, uh, for wash cycles and rinse cycles. But if you have any questions, Shane, you can visit us online or you can contact your local dealer.